you can get exercise almost anywhere. Lupe is always ready to dance. You don't think about diabetes, you don't think about anything, you step and have fun. Exercise and keeping fit actually improves the muscle's ability to take in glucose from the blood and then to process that glucose. If you have type 2 diabetes, it might be all you need along with the diet because the sugar now gets into the muscle cells better. And if you have type 1 diabetes, even though you still need to take insulin, it allows that insulin to work better. Exercise not only helps you manage your diabetes and control your weight, it also just feels great. On the weekend, Diane enjoys playing a round of golf, but she keeps moving during the week as well. I walk with a coworker and we try to go it's basically two miles that we try to do at lunchtime. And even some of the cold, rainy days, we did try to get out there and walk. Tom spends his work days sitting at a desk, so he and Char try to add exercise into each day, either outdoors or inside. It's not necessarily going running for three, five, six, seven miles. It's going out for a walk for 20 minutes, half an hour, 45, whatever you have time for. Then trying to hit the gym a couple times a week, try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Of course, the first step of starting any new exercise program should be a discussion with the doctor. Carol enjoys vigorous activities at her health club now, but even she had to work her way up to a workout. I started by just walking. And when I felt better about that and I started to lose some weight, I thought, I'm ready for the gym. Carol is living, thriving proof that exercise and good nutrition will help you lose weight. She's now more than 40 pounds lighter than she was when she was diagnosed. Now she has plenty of choices when she shops. But of course, the advantages to her overall health go much deeper. Weight management is important for everybody. It's especially important for people who are obese, and because of their obesity, they have the diabetes. There are things that we can do. There are tools that we have that will allow patients to lose weight. And when that happens, that is indeed the best way to control the blood sugars and to put health in the bank. Managing diabetes is very important because the complications can be serious. If blood sugar levels get too high or too low, you can have immediate problems. Hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, can cause the symptoms we associate with diabetes, thirst, hunger, frequent urination, and fatigue. But hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, can also have serious and immediate effects. And there are some classical symptoms of low blood sugar like dizziness, faintness, wooziness, sweating, heart palpitations, shakiness, uh, feeling faint as if you're going to fall asleep or pass out. The remedy for low blood sugar can be as simple as a glass of juice. Discuss this with your doctor so you know what to do before it happens. And God forbid if you have a low blood sugar reaction and you're driving behind a wheel in a highway or you're sawing off a limb in a tree or you're swimming in the middle of a lake and, and you become impaired, uh, you might get in trouble that way. So we are always very careful to teach our patients about the hypoglycemia, the low blood sugars, and how to prevent them. Another problem to be aware of is diabetic ketoacidosis. Waste products called ketones are produced when your body burns fat for fuel instead of glucose. Symptoms include loss of appetite, stomach pains, nausea or vomiting, fatigue, or a fruity smell on your breath. Your doctor will show you how to test for it at home and what to do if your ketones are too high. It's a problem that should be treated quickly. Having diabetes for many years means you might have some long-term problems. Managing your blood sugar and seeing your doctor regularly can help prevent or manage problems with your heart, bladder, erectile function, eyes, feet, and skin. So we 
will take your blood pressure. As we have said, having diabetes raises the risk for heart disease, so you need to be aware of how your blood pressure is doing and your cholesterol level. Like Tom, you might have to take additional medication. There is a history of high cholesterol in my family, and uh, typically a lot of diabetics do experience elevated cholesterol down the road. I'm on uh, medication right now. It's under control. Protecting your heart also means giving up smoking. We all know about tobacco and cancer, but smoking is also harmful to your blood vessels. For people with diabetes, that's especially dangerous. Tobacco accelerates the hardening of the arteries that causes strokes and heart attacks. And that's still the number one cause of death for all of our patients with diabetes. Anyone with diabetes must quit using tobacco. Giving up cigarettes can be a big challenge, but there's a lot of help available in every community. Ask at the doctor's office, look in the phone book, or go online, and you can find programs and services to help you quit now. Let's take a look at your eyes. Because diabetes can lead to blindness, every checkup will include an eye exam. You might be asked to see an eye specialist called an ophthalmologist as well, to make sure your eyes stay healthy. Every time you feel this on your foot, say yes. Expect to take off your shoes and socks at every checkup. Your health care team will want a good look at your feet. Yes. Yes. People with diabetes can develop neuropathy, degeneration of the nerves in the feet, that can lead to reduced sensitivity um, so that they're more prone to damage in the foot. They can also develop vascular disease, meaning that the blood supply isn't so good, and that also can predispose them to poor wound healing or problems with uh, the skin actually not functioning normally. So we always look at the feet to make certain that the nerves are working well and that the blood vessels are working well and that the skin is intact and that there are no problems. In between checkups, you need to check your feet at home. If they're dry, you might want to apply cream or oil, but don't soak your feet. That makes them more easily damaged. If you have sores or infections, contact your doctor right away. Okay, you gotta definitely be diligent checking your feet, and you want to protect them before you go outside, too. Everyone should take care of their gums and teeth, but for diabetics, it is especially important. People with diabetes are twice as likely to suffer from gum disease as the general public, so plan to see your dentist regularly. Skin disorders are also a common problem for people with diabetes. Your skin is your body's largest organ. Treat it with care and call your doctor if you have signs of infections such as redness, heat, swelling, bumps, or blisters. And again, the key to handling all of these issues is controlling your blood sugar. You have to keep testing regularly to make sure that whatever you're doing is working. But the good news is, if you do it right, all of those serious complications that people with diabetes are predisposed to can be reduced. So the outlook for people with diabetes today